Greetings and hello to you. Welcome to the channel. Happy to see you here. Thank you for tuning in. So the purpose of this video today is to talk about Patch Tour 3 and everything that's going into this deck. If you've been watching some of the latest videos we published, such as our Patch Tour 3 press conference or the Minor Arcana episode of Spirit Science, you'll probably know that there's a lot going into these cards. In those videos, we talked a lot about how we're shifting from the traditional Tree of Life to the Ascended Tree, which is a giant conversation of its own, but by moving some of these spheres around and reconnecting the bridge to spirit, it fundamentally changes the axiom by which we're orienting ourselves to the cards, to God, in the archetypal process of knowing ourselves more fundamentally. That's a lot of words, Jordan. The words that we use to define our experience really changes the experience that we have of life. In the same way, when it comes to using any tarot deck, you know, the symbols, the imagery, the ideas that are imbued in the cards are gonna have a huge effect on us. And one big piece of that is, of course, in addition to the meaning imbued underneath all the cards and the wisdom encoded within them and within the booklet and all the writings and everything like that, the pictures, the imagery themselves should be beautiful. And something really dawned on me as I thought that I was putting the finishing touches on these cards is, you know, these are gonna be printed in mass and people are gonna be using them all around the world. It's so important that it's done right the first time, especially because there's so much work going into the holographic as well, and multi-layering of like which elements of the cards are going to be holographic to make different parts of the imagery pop. And it just hit me that looking at the older versions of the cards in Patch Tour 1 and 2, there were just a number of cards that I really didn't love. And part of it was just my artistic skill that I had at the time going into them, uh, maybe not drawing upon the proper references, or just trying to work quickly to get the cards done before, because you can imagine it takes a lot of time to draw all of these cards, although some cards take a lot longer than others, and that's just done in a card by card basis. In the past couple of weeks, while we were getting everything ready to actually send these cards to the printers, I just realized it's gonna be better to produce the single greatest tarot deck and maybe take a little bit extra time rather than rush it and have a deck that doesn't quite live up to the hype or the standard that I'm setting for pretty much everything that I do and all of my work. And so today I wanted to take a moment to share with you a couple of updates on these cards and how some of the card images are changing. And so without further ado, step into my office and let me share with you what's new. To begin, here is the Nine of Wands. And you can see already it's subtle, but also a big shift. In the spirit of just wanting to love it, I didn't feel like this card needed an entirely redone thing. A lot of the assets, a lot of the elements of the imagery were great, it looked really cool. But the guy himself on his adventure of endurance, bringing his energy down, like that's part of the nature of this card is endurance. Go the distance, even if you're tired. I was just looking at this going, yeah, but I, I don't love it. Like I think that the character could just look more dynamic, more cool, more legendary, more epic, you know? And so I took some time and developed just the character himself, changing things around to make him much more dynamic, much more fun. It doesn't feel so cartoony. It definitely is still a cartoon. It's very cartoony, but it looks way cooler, you know? The next one that we're gonna look at here is the Seven of Cups. This is a very interesting card. The Seven of Cups is traditionally about illusion. It's really about that you have so many different aspects or things that are calling to you in life. Some of these things are very exciting. Some of them are mysterious. One of the cups is filled with a bunch of gold. So it can be like the illusion of chasing after wealth or fame or getting caught up in circumstances in involving other people. There's a piece of this, and this is a part of the shift to the ascended tree of life, which is that there is this illusion and everything is illusion. Everything is a part of the field of Maya, except for the spirit of our consciousness itself. And if we can identify that, then we can make really good and clear choices about the directions that we're going in life and where we wanna be. So this new version of the card did really see an entire remake, but it was also very simple and many of the assets of the, the cups themselves, I got to reuse. So it didn't really take so much time to have to update these images, 
but it really carries forth a higher understanding because now we see the light of the sun shining from above the surface of the water. And that's representing the spirit shining its light into the matrix of reality, into the illusion of reality. So there is the consciousness, the spirit that's ever present, that is real, despite the multidimensional illusion of everything in existence. The original character in the card had this gunky, messy kind of feel, like he's definitely drowning, he's not doing very well, and he's trapped in the illusion, he doesn't know where to go. In the new one, he's a lot more calm, a lot more balanced. He's reaching for the cup of victory, which also has that secret skull death on it, which is just indicating the relationship of as was born, so must die, recognizing the birth and death process and that in the death of the ego comes the liberation of the soul so that the soul's light can shine bright to a much greater degree. Still yet within this illusion, we can really have anything that we want to. If you want to go after a particular experience, know and understand that yes, life is filled with illusions. It may or may not be exactly what your soul wants, but you can have it. Just know that everything is illusion. And the last card that I want to look at here with you now is the Nine of Discs. Also, of course, traditionally could be called Nine of Coins or Nine of Pentacles. Essentially, the Nine of Discs represents growth. It represents the flourishing of all of the effort and the work that has come to pass, essentially coming to a point of harvest, if you will. All of the efforts, the toil, the struggle, the work that you've been doing is now starting to actually come to fruition. But as I looked at the original Nine of Discs, I just didn't love it. it. Everything from how the character looked to the ways that the flowers were drawn, the trees just seemed like they could all be more beautiful. Especially in this card representing so much growth and abundance and fertility. And so I really put my all into this one. And the new Nine of Discs looks like this. This one also has a lot more of the traditional symbolism. We've got the grapes really representing the fertility and the abundance. Grapes are always representative of that. The discs themselves are represented by the nine oranges growing on the tree, which is a little bit unique to this card, but it also represents the happiness and joy that is required in creating abundance. You know, if you want to create a strong, positive, healthy, dynamic life, it really starts within and happiness is a big part of it. And then as you live from that state, you manifest that level of abundance and fertility and growth and transformation all around you. We also have here in this card, the falcon, which wasn't exactly depicted in the same way. It was just a purple bird in the first one. Now we have a more traditional symbolism with the falcon who actually has the head covering. And the head covering, I needed to take some time to research that a little bit more and see why it was necessary. But Traditionally, falconry is a very dangerous thing and they use the head covers in order to kind of blind the bird so that it can become accustomed to the human interaction. Because falcons are not traditionally accustomed to spending a lot of close proximity with them. So this apparently helps them to stay very calm and become accustomed to that state. For the character here then, what the hooded falcon really represents is mastery over the untamed part of ourselves so that we become more balanced within the very high levels of skill that we are able to operate by. Because that's an aspect of falconry, which is, it's a very difficult to master skill, but a very cool skill to master if you can master it. Having such a partnership with the bird, I mean. So without further ado, that pretty much brings us to the end of our showcase here. But there's one more thing that I wanna to talk to you about. And so let's go back to the couch. Gosh, the lighting is just so much better over here, isn't it? Thank you again for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it and enjoyed looking at some of the behind the scenes as well as all of the new changes to these cards. One of the things that I wanted to talk about in closing though is regarding this pre-order and the whole plan. In the past, I did say we were intending to be able to ship them out to you by the end of summer. And we could actually still hit that, but I wanna be a little bit flexible just in the sense of wanting to make sure this is genuinely the greatest tarot deck that could possibly exist. I don't want to rush it, so I want to make sure to take the proper amount of time so that every card looks good, especially regarding the holographic foil on every single card. It is something that takes a little bit extra precision, but I know that you're going to be so much happier with it if the job is done well instead of just 
a little bit rushed or a little bit sloppy. So on that note though, the other piece of this whole puzzle is that these cards are not print on demand. We have to order a large batch of these from the printers in order to be able to ship them to you. They're not just done one at a time. That does require a larger upfront payment for us to be able to order these cards and our pre-order is what makes it possible for us to do that. This was always the case in Patch Tarot with one and two, we would always do these pre-orders that would allow us to print all of the decks and make them available. And so if you're interested and into this project and you wanna see it come to fruition, please use the link in the description to explore and learn more about Patch Tarot 3. You can place an order from that page. It really means a lot to see all of the enthusiasm and excitement around this deck. And I can't wait to continue sharing all of the new changes. Pretty soon we're gonna share a full deck reveal as well as be launching an exclusive Patch Tarot community inside our new Spiritverse Academy. That is just a little teaser. There's a lot more on the way. But for now, I'll say thank you again for watching. Wishing you a wonderful day. God bless, and we'll see you next time.